Hey y'all! In this video, we're going to spend most of our time outside working on the machine, so I can show you how I go about changing tools when I have bit changes in a project. But I figured it was only fair that I go ahead and show you how I created the tool paths that I'm going to be working with outside. Now, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because this is not the main focus of this video. Everything that I'm going to be doing here within the Vectric software, I have already shown in parts 18, 19, and 20 of my VCAR for Absolute Beginners series. And I'll put a link in the description below to the playlist of the entire series and another link to a playlist of those three videos that I'm talking about right now. So let's go ahead and get into it. I will create a new file and this is going to be a single-sided job. The width of my material is 3 and 7 eighths inch wide in X. It is 12 inches tall in Y and the thickness is approximately a quarter of an inch. I'm setting my Z0 to the material surface and for layout purposes I'm setting my XY datum position to the center of the material. My modeling resolution is very high. We'll go ahead and click OK. The model that I'm going to carve is again a piece of the clip art that comes with the vCarve software and I've gone to the clip art library then clicked on weaves and I'm going to be carving this one so I'll double click it to put it in the center of my material then immediately go back over to my drawing tab from here I'm going to resize this object and I want to make sure I have link XY checked I want to anchor it to the center and I'm going to adjust my width to 3.5 inches. That automatically, because I have link XY selected, automatically changes my height to 3.5 inches and it automatically scales the Z thickness, the Z depth of this model. I'll click apply and then close that window. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to create a vector outline. So I'll go over here to my modeling tab and with it selected I'll click create a vector boundary. Then I can go back to my drawing tab. Now if I select that vector we'll see that they are solid pink and it created vector a vector outside as well as a bunch on the inside. With them being solid pink, that tells me it's a group. I'll come over here and ungroup those. Then, holding down Shift, I'll click on the outside vector. I do not need these inside vectors, so I'll tap Delete on my keyboard. I'll select this outside vector, and I want to offset that vector outwards one-eighth of an inch. I'll click Offset, close that, and now I don't need this inside vector running around the uh, 3D model. So I can just tap Delete and it's gone as well. Now I'm ready to move this model downwards, so I'll draw a box from right to left around it, then click it again and drag the whole thing straight down the center line to about right about there. That looks good enough for me. Just going to use this bottom corner of the material and leave me this much to use for something else. Now I'm ready to start calculating toolpaths. I can switch over to the toolpath tab and with everything selected, the model and that vector, I can click on 3D Finishing Toolpath. 
This brings me into the material setup where I can check on and confirm a couple things. I can confirm the thickness of my material is a quarter of an inch. And right now, because I'm finished with my layout, I can change my XY datum to the bottom left corner of the material because that's where I set my X, Y, and Z zero. I'm going to zero my Z on the material surface. And the other important setting here is the model position in the material. There is no gap above the model, meaning the model is all here from the material surface down to however thick the model happens to be. I can go ahead and click OK. And that brings me into my 3D finishing toolpath. I'm going to be using my 16th of an inch tapered ball nose. I'll just give it a quick check to make sure everything is all right. We've got a step over of 3% for this small model. And I'm doing that to eliminate some sanding. It does, however, increase the machining time. So we'll click OK. Now I'm going to make sure I've got my model and the vector selected because I'm going to machine to that selected vector. I've got a boundary offset of 1 8 of an inch, meaning that bit is going to come over here and machine an eighth of an inch to the other side of this vector. I want this vector area to be clear. I, my strategy is going to be raster, and my raster angle is 90 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and call this 1 1 16th tapered ball nose 3D finish. I'll get rid of the 1, and we'll calculate that toolpath. Okay, with the toolpath calculated, I'm going to jump back over to my 2D view, click off to deselect everything, select just the vector, close my preview window, go into a profile toolpath. My start depth is zero, my cut depth is a quarter inch plus five thousandths to go all the way through the material. I'm using an eighth inch end mill. It's going to take three passes to get through that. That's fine. I'm going to machine to the outside of the vector here. And I am going to do a separate last pass with an allowance of 0.01. I'm not going to add tabs. And I'm going to change the name to profile cutout. Now I'll calculate that tool path. It's warning me the tool is going to cut through the material. I know that. And now I'll preview both of these tool paths at the same time by clicking on Preview All Tool Paths. Okay, with the tool paths run simulated, I can double click on the waste material, zoom in, and we can take a look, see what this is going to look like. I think I can clean up those edges with a little bit of sanding, kind of soften those edges. And that's going to do nicely for what I want to do. So now I can close my preview and I can save G code. The first piece of G code I'm going to save will be the tapered ball nose 3D finish. So I'll put a check mark in that box, click on Save Toolpath, output all visible toolpaths to one file. There's only one toolpath to save. So now I'll click on Save Toolpaths. I've navigated to my USB drive, and I've already got my name selected here. I've got the right folder I'm going to save it in. I'll save. Now I'm going to uncheck that toolpath and check the profile cutout. I'll save toolpath for that one and I forgot to put it in the title of the toolpath.
but I'm cutting it with a 1 8 inch end mill. And I'll save that toolpath. Now I have my two pieces of G code. I can close Save Toolpath window, go up here to Summary, and I see that my profile cutout is going to take about 55 seconds to machine. And the 3D model is going to take about two hours to machine. So with that in mind, let's go on outside, load some G-code, and start cutting. Okay, I'm out here on the CNC. I've got the uh, CNC router honed. I'm all set and ready to go. And these are the two bits that I'm going to be using. This is my 160 tapered ball nose bit. Here's hoping that focuses on that. And then I have my 1 8 inch down cut end mill. I'll put links in the description box below to both of these bits for those of you who are interested. Uh, some may be affiliate links, some may not be affiliate links. I've also got my PPE here. I'm going to be cutting this in aromatic cedar. And I'm here to tell you, this you can consider this a pro tip or not. If you ever cut aromatic cedar, you want a respirator. I don't care how good your uh, dust collection is. When aromatic cedar, you start cutting it and that bit gets into those oils, it becomes, holy cow, what have I done? Mommy, mommy, make it stop aromatic. I'm here to warn you, it will run you out the shop. Okay, I know everybody's system is a little bit different. I use Mach 3 on an old PC running Windows XP. So when I plug my uh, thumb drive in, my flash drive in, I open up the flash drive, and I have a folder here on my computer. Hopefully it'll open up. Come on. There we go. And what I do, get into my flash drive, I find the folder that I want to that has my G-code files, and I transfer it over to the computer. Do not run G-code files off of a flash drive. You are asking for trouble. USB timeouts, port problems, or just the thumb drive itself is slow at transferring data. That can cause all kinds of problems. That only takes a second. Go ahead and transfer it off of your flash drive onto the computer you run your CNC off of, if indeed you run your CNC off of a PC. Don't try to run it off the flash drive. You will eventually have problems. Once I'm absolutely certain that that file has transferred over onto the PC, I go ahead and I just take the flash drive out, put it in my pocket. Now, I run my CNC off of Mach 3, and I have a different screen set installed on my computer for Mach 3. And this is what mine looks like. Yours may look like the old standard Mach 3 screen. That's fine. I have this one because of my three-way touch plate. This is not required. You can get into Mach 3 and do things to it if you use Mach 3. But that's for another video that I've done previously. I'll link it in the description below. So with my CNC turned on, I've already homed it, as I said. I'm going to load my first G-code for this carving. And that will be my 16th inch tapered ball nose G-code. So I'll go ahead and load that up. Let it get going. Okay. Now, as I mentioned before, I use a three-way touch plate. This is the Triple Edge Finder from Bill Griggs over at the Maker's Guide. I'll put a link in the description box below to Bill's website where you can get more information on the uh, Triple Edge Finder. I've had it for four years. I love it. It makes things so much easier. I use it to set my X, Y, and Z zero. And the way I usually do it is I'll go ahead and just put a 
quarter inch spiral bit in a collet and put that up here in the router just hand tight and I'll use it to set my X and Y zero. The X and Y zero, once you have them set, don't need to be changed at all. Even during a tool change, doesn't matter what. If you don't have a three-way touch plate, they are not required at all. Believe me, you can just chuck your tapered ball nose or a V-bit or something like that and use your controls to get the corner, get the tip of that bit as close to the corner of this piece of material as you can. So, and that's, that's the old school method. A lot of people use that method. It's 100% up to you. But by using my touch plate, I am guaranteed to hit that corner first time every time and it makes things repeatable. I mean, should the power go out or something like that in the middle of a car, I can shut everything down and when I get power again, come back, reset my XYZ zero and I know it's spot on and I can pick up the car from where it, it left off. So let me quit talking and get over here and set my X and Y zero. My X and Y are now set to zero. Now I can go ahead, take this loose, and put that away off to the side. I can take this spiral bit out of the router, bring in my tapered ball nose my X and my Y are now set to zero and I should not need to adjust that again I have tapered ball nose now put in the collet I can put my collet wrenches away and now I need to bring my touch plate back so I can set my Z0. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing this. Look at the bottom of this touch plate. It has these, this rim machined in it. This area is machined out of it. And that is made so you can drop the touch plate right there and lock it on that corner to set your X and Y0. And people have asked, well, what do you do if you're out here or something like that? you want to set your Z0 out here. Very simple. Flip the touch plate over. There you go. The thickness of this touch plate is entered in Mach 3 back in setup a long time ago. Now I'm going to be carving up in this area right here. It's quite possible that this piece of material has a bow in it or something like that. So I'm going to put my touch plate up here upside down in the area that I'm going to carve. Make sure that I'm grounded do a sanity check here, touch the bit with the touch plate, and make sure I've got good connectivity. Then I'll move my bit over to it, bring it down, and I bring it down to within about a quarter of an inch of the touch plate, somewhere like that right in there. Now when I hit Z0 on my Mach 3 screen, I'll do one last sanity check and boom I've got good connectivity I'll come over here and click the button on Mach 3 to do my Z0 with my finger firmly poised over the panic button there we go my Z is now set to zero as an alternative if you do not have a touch plate for your CNC maybe you're one of the folks who do the old school paper method. That's perfectly acceptable. That is where you'll bring a piece of paper over here above your zero point, lower your bit down, start wiggling that paper, put your machine into single step mode and keep wiggling that paper until that bit comes down and touches that paper and you start feeling resistance. 
When you start feeling resistance, stop, go over, set your work zero, then raise the Z up, get that paper out of there, you're ready to go. As it sits right now, I'm set, my Z is set, my X, my Y are set, my G code is loaded, I'm ready to put on my PPE and get to cutting this model. Okay, we're finished with that cut. We finished the 3D portion of the carve.
And as you can see, the elapsed time on that carve was one hour and 41 minutes. The reason for that was because, as I've said several times before, what I tend to do is bump up my feed rate. Now you see I got that red LED flashing right there. That indicates that I did a feed rate override. You can see the readout right there next to the letter F. That's the feed rate that I set in vCarve Pro. Up next to that flash, flashing LED, it says FRO. That's feed rate override. That was the actual speed I cut this at. So that cut about 20 minutes off of the carve time, maybe a little more. So when I say I can bump up my feed rate and adjust it on the fly, that's exactly what I mean right there. I adjusted my feed rate up to 70 inches per minute instead of 50 inches per minute, and that uh, drastically reduced my carving time. With the 3D carving done, it's time for the whole reason for shooting this long video, and that is my tool change. So what I need to do, first of all, is get this 16th inch tapered ball nose out of here. And I will swap in my 8th inch end mill. Here is my alligator clip, and now I do a little sanity check. Double check to make sure that I've got good connectivity. And again, I've got my touch plate sitting out here real close. Since I've carved away all that material right there, I can't go right for the center. I can't put my touch plate right there, but I can put it right back here where it's very, very close. Now, since this is a profile cutout and I've got the tool path set up to cut five thousandths of an inch deeper than this material is thick, it's not 100% necessary that I get spot on laser perfectly level. I just got to get it real close. If this was switching over from a V-bit to a large area clearance tool on a V-carve tool path. I would have figured out where my model was in my material from the start and made sure I zeroed from the same spot every time. But for right now, this is good enough. And again, if you don't have or don't use a touch plate and you're using the piece of paper, Find a spot that's close and use that piece of paper to reset your Z. Again, we do not need to do anything with X and Y. X and Y have not changed. It's Z only. So let me bring my bit down, get it positioned over here, and bring it down Within about a quarter of an inch, one last sanity check to make sure I got good connectivity. I do. Now, I'll set my Z zero. Okay, my Z is now zeroed. I can move these off of the table. Put on my PPE and get to carbon. Okay, with my gantry back out of the way, I can now take the piece off of the spoil board. Well, I can take the scrap up off the spoil board. I find an old tore up wood chisel to be real handy here. Anybody who ever doubted the uh, tape and CA glue method of clamping down parts, you can see right here that, oh boy, does it ever hold. Holds real well.
Now, with it still mounted on the spoil board, I'm going to go ahead and use a little sanding brush. This is a 240 grit sanding brush that I've got chucked in my cordless drill. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description box below to one of these. I have two of them. I use a 240 grit and a 400 grit for real detailed stuff. And buddy, I'm here to tell you this works. And there we go. Pull that off. Peel the tape off. I have a little bit of cleanup sanding to do on the back. But there's our finished piece. And here's the finished piece. I'll throw up a couple of stills so you can get a better, closer look at it. Now, as you can see, yeah, I kind of made a couple mistakes. You can see here the, hey, we got a little square up on top and a little on bottom. That's 100% my fault. That comes from not really measuring the width of your material and forgetting that, well, this is actually from a closet pack, aromatic cedar, and it's got a tongue on one side and a groove on the other. And I really thought that I had measured it correctly, and I hadn't. So, hey, live and learn. If I'd uh, shrunk it down to three and a quarter inches instead of three and a half, I'd have been perfect. So, I want to say thank you for sticking with me. I know this is a real long video. There was a lot of information to get out there. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. If you got anything out of this video at all, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to continue to follow along with my CNC adventures, the Vectric software tutorials, or my laser adventures, uh, just consider subscribing to my channel. But as usual, whether you subscribe or not, I'd like to thank you again very much for taking the time to watch this video. Y'all take care.